Hey YouTube, Dragon Duel Scroll here with a few announcements. Um, on behalf of Core TCG, there was a really cool raffle for Pot of Duality, and the winners have been announced. There's also been other uh, few things raffled off, so that's pretty cool. Uh, the winner of the Pot of Duality is Juan Doan. He got the Pot of Duality. Paul Lee got a Doom Caliber Knight. A Grandmaster playset in sleeves went to Henry Hun. And a Ryko playset went to Michael Miranda. So congratulations to you guys. You should be receiving your prizes in the mail shortly. And hope you had fun entering and uh, making your purchases. And this week's video is going to be a continuation to last week's, last week's video, which was about side decking and playing around the meta. And the meta is, uh, you know, heavily reflected on, you know, what top set events and what we'll be seeing in the future, especially since there's no, you know, neat core sets being released between the time of YCS Charlotte and YCS Anaheim. So we're going to be talking about what we're going to be seeing and what you should expect. And this video is specifically about playing around the decks. Now, last weeks that uh, video was about siding, but game one you want to already have an advantage and a lot of times when you watch people play you notice that they'll misplay in terms of they didn't do the right move in the situation against that deck and playing around the deck is one of the most important things when you're playing against the deck <laughs> it's not always you know you're not playing against yourself unless you're playing something like an OTK Exodia deck um, so you know you have to learn to play properly around certain things, and there's a lot of things people don't realize that you can do to play around a deck. So we're going to cover those um, little itty bitty details that people might happen to miss, and hopefully you'll learn something cool. So let's begin. Alright, before we begin, this is this week's code, DGG Brianek. You can enter this in the core TCG website and get a 5% discount on singles. Alright, let's begin. Now this video is basically going to be about how to play around certain decks, and this isn't exactly necessarily covering the side, this is just talking about certain tips and tricks you might not know. So Elemental Hero Gem Miracle Gemini decks. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Elemental Hero the Shining can miss timing. So if you destroy it on a chain link 2 or higher, it does not get its effect to get back uh, Elemental Heroes from the remove from play pile. So if people who play Icarus Attack or Gemini's um, Spark should know that you know that's one of the options that they, that you have in order to get rid of it, other than balancing it with card effects like Bryo or Caius. Uh, you might not have that option, so this is one of them. Also, um, make sure that you, you're aware of that, because you can literally, if it's summoned, go activate MST on something and then chain Torrential Tribute, and that will basically do it. So anybody playing Icarus, Torrential, or... Um, Gemini Spark, anything that can be activated on a chain link, should know that. Another thing to know is, if they bring out a Neos Alias, don't bother activating D Prison or Bottomless on it. That should be a little something common sense, because that's how they get their plus off of Spark. You don't want them to plus off of Spark. So you want to run this over, mainly. If you try to get rid of it in any other way that they can chain to, they're going to chain to it, and you're going to lose that on cards. So that's something that is important to know. Karakuri Machina. Now this guy is Bure, and this is usually the first thing they go into in order to get their pluses off. If you stop the first one, they usually run out of momentum because this, the first one they usually minus to bring out and the other two, and then the Shogun, they usually um, use their pluses that, and the card advantage they gained off of the first one to go off. So stop the first one. Um, another thing is to make sure you watch out for Limiter. And this deck, basically the momentum comes from, um, you know, Sometimes it's a plant engine and they'll go into the car curries to plus, but the thing is they're over investing in fields So if By end of their first turn they'll usually pop off and they'll get three of these on the field But they'll usually have like one card in hand afterwards and this deck doesn't really have an answer to cards like dark hole so you know make sure <laughs> like you just dark hole it and they, you clear their field and they have no more momentum left, so that's one of the downfalls of that deck, but not a lot of people realize that. So if you can overcome that heavy field presence, if you're lucky enough to draw into Dark Hole, it's like the worst enemy of this deck, then that will basically get over it. X Savers. Now there's plenty of things to be said. Of course, one of them being, don't pop random face downs. It has, there's a chance of it being an Emerald Blade, but there's also a chance of it being a Dark Soul. So it's not worth it. Also, don't leave more than two X Savers on the field. They're going to go Fall Trail, you know, um, and also, you know, save your seven tools plays and stuff like that. For one, they're about to trap, so then you can clear your field. Um, you want to have your back row presence. You don't want it to be completely dead. 
and with Book of Moon at one, there's not many answers to Trapston. So that's something important to know. Fish OTK. Okay. Now one of the obvious things is be careful when you're leaving monsters in attack position. Don't carelessly leave monsters in attack position. What this deck normally does is it won't really make much plays. It'll it'll do very minor things, and then once they get their true nade or whatever, they'll pop off and they'll go colossal armory arm. And if you have a target for armory arm or two armory arms, because they can easily do that, you're going to be OTK. There's nothing you can do about that unless you have double Valor in your hand. So don't carelessly leave monsters in attack position. Only only do that if you know you're going to go for game. Play the same game as them. OTK them. Uh, that's one of the one of the most important uh, things as to playing around them because there's no real way to get out of that loop. Um, another thing is if they're going super ancient and you have a Valor in hand, make sure if you're Valoring, they don't have another fish on the field because people make this mistake often. If it has a built-in titanium effect, it can pop another plant to negate the Valor. So, you know, make sure you're not carelessly activating cards without reading it. And that's one of the most important things about playing against decks. If you don't have the effect memorized, and you only know the effect as far as what your opponent says, just read the card, because there's always something else to be seen. So, that's something good to know. Alright, next. Dragonies, and this is one of those decks that just heavily rely on one card as the engine, and that is Dr Dragon Ravine. The deck can't do much without Ravine. Um, so save your MSTs. Don't get trigger happy with them. Don't blind MST things. If you know you're playing against a Dragonity deck, set them and chain them. Because uh, if you're not aware, continuous spell cards and continuous traps have to be on the field when they trigger and resolve in order to successfully resolve. So if they ravine and they discard a card for it, pay their cost, and you chain MST, they don't get their card to their hand. So it's a minus two for them. Um, so it's like basically a plus one. Um, so it's a one for two. Um, that's something really important to know. Also, uh, watch out for Trident OTK. You know, it's one of those decks that also rely on Giant Trunate to go off. There's not many plays outside of that. Um, and of course, game two and three, you might not want to just wait for, to chain the MST because they might go into Maleficus because the, the engine is basically ravine. There's nothing else to really do with it. So that's good to know. Plants. Now, um, plant synchro or you know chaos plants. Anything with a plant engine, usually, it's a very adapted engine. It doesn't necessarily do one thing. It can go into you know an immense amount of synchros, and there's not one thing it's relying on specifically that you can play around other than the graveyard itself. So I would have to go into side to talk about that. But basically, don't don't rely on one thing as your win condition. Like if you're sitting on a reaper, don't expect that reaper to stay there long. Plants have a lot of plays, so you have to also change up your play style as well. Constantly be changing what you're doing so that the deck has a hard time adapting to what you're doing because that's basically its win condition. It adapts to your win condition and it plays around you. So you have to constantly play that game with them and you know counter that. So that's something important to know. And of course, aside from that, you just side into against them game two and three in wreck because it's just so graveyard reliant. Gravekeepers. Now the concept of this deck is it'll wall with searchers like Spy and Recruiter. They won't do much else, and it relies on Necro Valley to get their uh, to make their monsters into big beat sticks to run everything over. Everything else that can't be run over by some a monster over 2100 is taken care of by Descendant. So Descendant is one of the main win conditions of the deck because Descendant clears off the field for them. One of the most important things to know is um, an early game Stardust. Of course, don't swing with it. Use it as field protection because these guys do play deep prison as a standard in their deck. Early Stardust, early Beast, uh, Natura Beast will sh shut this deck down, and there's not many answers to it. So that's something really nifty to know. Um, next, Six Samurais. Now, Six Samurais, the engine last format was basically, um, you know, drop gateways or Uniteds on the field. You know, they minus bringing Sheehan out, but it doesn't matter because they'll plus off of those cards after summoning their Samurais. But the way it works now is usually they'll smoke signal and they'll go into Sheehan, but they usually don't have a gateway or occasionally United. So the most important thing to know is the Sheehan is a minus when it comes out um, most of the time. So they're using it as a form of field protection, though. Be careful with destruction effects. When you want to get this off the field, you want to go Caius or Bryo. If you go something like Scrap Dragon, it's probably going to get uh, Magatama, so be very cautious about that. 
Magatama is something that's usually run double or triple of in, as standard in this format's builds. Flambell Swarms. Now there's not much to be said about this because um, obviously it's something that also relies heavily on the graveyard, but one of the main things it does is it'll mill with the Lightsworn engine and then it'll play rekindlings. So just be on the lookout for that. One of the things to know is Flambell Fire Dog has to destroy as a result of battle. I see uh, mistakes uh, often made where like a, I see a fire dog swing at a token and then they'll, get, they'll try to get their effect off and I don't know, people just don't bother, bother to read their opponent's effects especially cards they're not familiar with and are not popular in the meta, people will just widely ignore it. Just read the cards, that's one of the main things. And uh, read the cards, learn to play around them, learn the engine, and that's basically how you'll get around it. So make sure you guys don't forget that, because that was one of the decks that also top 32 at YCS that we might see net decks of later on. And that's basically it. Uh, questions or comments, leave them to me. Anything, any nifty tips or tricks you might have learned to play against certain meta decks, uh, you can leave them in the comments below. I do read them. Um, take care, guys. Bye.